Please welcome the state championship team from the Louder Than a Bomb Poetry Competition, Arts Academy in the Woods. We're going to be doing uh, two individual poems first, and then if we have time, a group poem. Uh, so, this is, this is a letter, or, well, it's called Dear Mommy. I'm Rebecca Khan. Um, I'm a junior, and I'm also the captain of this team. Dear Mommy, did you love me the second you saw me? Have you ever felt how smooth this skin is? I looked into my honey pools of eyes. Have you ever seen a smile spread across this face? Probably not. And to be honest, it kind of breaks my heart to think that you didn't hold me, but fantasizing about your fingers raising my skin, are you possibly remembering the birthmark right above my left knee? It's kind of breaking me. And I'm sick of crying over the unknown. Dear mommy, when I look into the mirror, I imagine that this constellation of freckles beneath my left eye is a gift from you and this crooked smile from daddy, but I don't see either of you before me. I see my own family. I got an older brother that takes care of me and a grandma that cherishes me. I got two parents who lift me up no matter what. While you're in a whole different country tending to your responsibilities, didn't you know I was your responsibility? But you don't worry, but don't worry. They're taking care of me and they're more than willing to share, but to be honest, I don't think I'm quite ready to meet the people who let me go. Dear mommy, did you know that I'm a poet now? I'm four foot 11 and I'm an AB student. I got six guinea pigs when I'm grown, I want two kids. Did you know that I'll bow to them, that I am the pillow to fill on like my real mama did for me? Well, how would you know all of that? Dear mommy, have you ever kissed my forehead to feel my temperature when I wasn't feeling well? Or do you know my tells? Have you ever put a red rag on warm skin to avoid fever from raisin? And you know, I could tell you the answers to these questions, but I think you already know. Just like I think you already know that when you handed me away, you took the name mommy into my pocket on the way out, so it's your birth giver. My mommy, she has gray roots and curls, and she's got ocean blue eyes that I can't find comfort in when I cry. My mommy's five foot two with fair skin, because it does not matter who I grew in. Let me say it once more, it does not matter who I grew in, because she loves me, and she loves my constellation of freckles and my smile. She knows me better than the backs of her hand, and she loves me to the moon and back, and these are just facts. It doesn't mean that I hate you. Sincerely, the baby that you gave away in 2002, P.S. I'll always take you. Ooh. Hi guys, can you hear me? Yes. This poem is called I'm Lights Out. When I was in second grade, I survived off the three dollar light like my mother begrudgingly purchased from a convenience store. That bead of yellow sanctuary had the ability to diminish fear and protect me from anything. In sixth grade, I abandoned that night light after my father told me to man up, quit fearing darkness, and instead open him like an old friend. In eighth grade, I realized women did not hold my affection or desire in their palms. Only boys with big hearts and wide grins could do that. In ninth grade, this epiphany crippled me. Chewed me up as if I was tobacco in southerner's mouth and refused to spit me out for an order to ease the pain of teeth, I told the truth. Mm. I thought it was a good idea conceptually. I figured they would have accepted me because that's what mother and father are supposed to do. Instead, they cut me loose, expelling refurbished boy from broken home, homeless heart in big city. In 10th grade, I stopped eating and sleeping and resembling anything other than melancholy made human. I resided under bridges if they were mansions, seeking shelter like nomad, my one Jehovah with the skyscrapers. New York Beauty be playing like reruns of TV sitcoms. Bright lights illuminating with no effort. Being friend to the friendless in 11th grade, I chase thrills. Back in alley kind of deals, pills, an intoxicating state of intoxication. Bodies, ghost of conquest, boys residing in me till I resemble cemetery. I'm unhinged in addicts of sorts, chasing highs and guys. Temporary happiness skyscrapers just can't give you. You meet some bad people like that, you know? You hang out on the wrong side of the tracks for too long to stop not to look so wrong anymore. 
They don't feel that wrong anymore until the guns in your head and lovers start ending up dead and the ghost in your bed ain't metaphorical no more. People drop like flies around here, tears drop like flies around here. I wanna drop like a fly around here and so great I made up my mind. Or more accurately, my mind made up me, tricked the little boy like it always does. And I listen to those thoughts, those snake hidden and forbidden fruit kind of thoughts. I grab darkness, embrace and shadow, welcome him like an old friend, just like daddy told me to. It's hard to see anything in the midst of all this black. But like firefly at midnight, they shine the single light, the same light I plugged into my bedroom wall so many years ago. The one that always protected me, never neglected me, battling monsters and closets, tearing ghouls to pieces, and then I recall the mother who purchased it. A complex woman who exercised son because he was evil. She birthed a boy with demonic destiny, a devil devoid of deities. Maybe the only monster in my closet is me. Maybe monster will do everyone his favor and slay it. So I don't want to do this. I really want to do this. I don't think I'm strong enough to do this. I'm too strong to do this. God, someone stop me. Some unidentifiable force made of wishes and it gets better. Stop me from doing this. God, do you exist? God, have you thought about changing things, tilting this world on this axis and spinning the globe into my pain no longer exists? God, you live in a world made of light. You sit auspiciously near the sun when no one can see you, but you get that light from people like me. You steal that light from here. There's no need for you to be a thief and take what you created. This lot is in a giving mood and it'll give you my life here. Bang. Lights out. Nearly 3,000 people were killed in, in retaliation, retaliation. The government issued new laws, laws restrictive, restrictive policies to keep our country safe and our citizens safer. On December 14, 2012, terrorists entered Sandy Hook Elementary and took 26 lives. The government said sorry. On April 20th, 1999, at Columbine High School, Eric Harris and Dylan Cleveland murdered 12 innocent students. The, the government, government didn't alter a single gun law or implement restrictive policies. Instead, they issued a half-hearted apology. As if the death of a dozen couldn't be mended with a sympathetic tweet. This, this poem should not exist. We should not have to beg to roam school hallways safely. There should be no stands on the importance of cafeteria, hangout spots devoid of gunmen. The blood-soaked teen bodies littering classroom floors should be enough. The Magenta State School issued polo shirts and khakis should be enough. The children missing out on college years and mirror image baby first steps should be enough. The teen training graduation cast for body bags should, should be, be more than, than enough. enough. Don't, Don't blame this on bullying. bullying. I've been bullied since the fifth grade and I have yet to pick up the AK-47 and sign my own prison sentence. Don't, Don't blame this on parents. parents. I keep my secrets from mine on a daily basis. What's more more lie about the existence of a black underneath my mattress? Don't, Don't blame this on discipline. No bites in the skin every other day. But you can't beat mental illness. It always hits back. Don't, Don't blame, blame this on teachers. teachers. They do what they can for little finance in return. It is not their job to bring this weapon as warning, act as warden and warrior. They find this. Blame this on you. Blame this on elected officials. Blame this on pathetic political personnel that watches get gunned down in schools they barely find. Blame this on those who sit back idly while bullets by babies' bodies and bodies whose breath and breath fails to reach long, forgetting how to disperse, transforming into corpse, corpse, disintegrate, dissipate, just like school shooters' mental state. Marijuana should not be more policed than assault rifles. I can't drink at 18, but I can buy a potential murder weapon. Make firearms harder to come by. 
Nice, easily purchased at Skittles and Era Arizona iced tea at your local Walmart. Makes sense of your decision to continue letting our classmates metamorphosize into pubescent angels. Make, Make a, a change. change! I dare you to save a generation. I dare you to do anything other than ignore the backlash and continue writing checks your actions won't cap. Don't make false promises over presidential subtweets. Don't let guttural cries fall on deaf ear. Listen, Listen while, while we're still here because for all we know the next bullet could be for us. The next school shooter could be best friend or first period truant. And don't, don't say he didn't see it coming. Don't, don't say he seemed like a nice guy. Don't say we didn't warn you. Don't say nothing when we're the ones that turn into poetry.